So you got code in one file, code in another file, and you got like messages coming from wherever. It's gonna run here, it's gonna run there. You don't know where the answer is. You're stuck. Ah. <sighs> hmm. I just, I, I don't know. So you get into that situation and uh, how do you fix it? How do you program for asynchronous code? So today I'm gonna to talk a little bit about a framework called Combine. Welcome to the Deb Method. My name is Ricky. Let's start by just getting the basics of some of the components we need to understand how to use Combine and the problem it's gonna help us solve. It can solve many different types of problems, but the most general idea is asynchronous programming. So what do I mean by that? So you got code in one place, you got code in another place in the app. Uh, they seemingly don't work together uh, the way you would think they would. It results maybe in a crash. It results in um, very strange state that your screen has, or, you know, your front end UI. Um, it could even be for back end code too. You need to handle things in a particular way um, that uh, is really difficult to code for. You have very specific logic that you're trying to solve um, and all of the types that you have get mixed up. Is it an integer? Is it a custom structure or a class? So we're going to use Combine to help us rein all that in together and give us some fundamental tools, methods. Uh, they're called operators to handle all of these situations. So think of this as just adding more to your tool belt, not absolutely required, but can make your life a whole lot easier. Uh, so the first thing I want to just bring your attention to is the subject. So the subject here is kind of where it all begins, um, especially if you're introducing this into a project that you currently already already have out in the world. So it's it's like uh, you, you didn't build from the ground up with this. You're inserting this logic in afterwards. Um, and then you have subscribers, right? Um, so we kind of have this, the idea of a uh, published subscriber. So it's not necessarily the observer pattern. Um, it's a little bit of that if you want to think about it that way. But um, the whole point that you need to think about is um, you set up beforehand who's going to be sending these messages and who's going to be receiving them. So it's kind of like who's throwing the ball and who's catching the ball. But all the things that happen in between, so like the air moving, um, could be a gust of wind. It, there could be an object in front of it that like hits the ball and it goes somewhere else. So that ball is going to be your data, your information, that class, that struct, that integer, that string, whatever it is. And eventually when it makes its way to the catcher, the, the thing catching it is you want to think of it as the subscriber. So the publisher is the one throwing the ball. The ball itself is your data. And then the catcher is that subscriber. So that's how you want to think about it. And then there's so many weird things can ha that can happen in between. Um, and there's different ways to kick off that ball. So like that publisher could be the batter. It could be hitting the ball with the bat um, and it goes in a particular direction. Um, it could be the thrower where it's just throwing a ball from one person to the next. And so it starts there and it throws it to somebody else. You could also think of it as like, I'm a thrower. I'm going to throw it to somebody that other person catches it and then throws it again to somebody else. So there's so many different combinations you can come up with. I hope that analogy works for you. If it doesn't, you need a new one, just let me know in the comments below. I'll try and think of something new. Uh, so right now, you want to think of this as the, uh, the thrower. So the subject is the thrower. I'll put it in comments here. And then the catcher is that subscriber. Okay? And then here we throw the ball, right? And then here, this is a little different. This is where the analogy breaks down, but we're done throwing any more balls. Done throwing the balls. So subject, subscribers. So subject is your publisher. And then you got the subscriber, right? So let's, let's just walk through this code and what it actually does. So right now I have a subject here. Um, ignore this other part, the specific type of subject it is. Um, and then we have a subscriber. And then we're throwing the ball. And then we're telling the, you know, any subscribers we're done throwing the ball. So how this works, uh, what's happening just from top level down is basically we set up our way of communication between the two, the publisher and the subscriber. And then we start doing actions. So this is that part in the code I was talking about where 
um, you're, you're doing something with it, like displaying it on screen. Um, the data has updated, so now you need to refresh it on the display. That's where this code would, would run. Update your text label, update your table, update just one row of the table, whatever it is, this is exactly what you need to do. Um, and then you have here um, that you're done. So it's like kind of like taking the view off the screen or, or at least telling, um, not this, maybe let's back up a second. It's not that the view exited the screen and you're done. That could, that could be one scenario. Uh, it could just be that the data is done completing. Like you got all the bits of data. If it's a table view or if it's like a list of things and the end count is variable. So it might be 10, might be 20, might be 30, might be five, might be one. Uh, this is a way of just saying like, I'm not gonna send anymore. I am completely done. That's the idea. So with that, um, let's walk through this one by one. So we first have the subject. It's called a pass-through subject, which means it starts with absolutely no value. There's no initial value. And we're gonna be passing through an integer. That's our baseball, that's our data. So that's the ball we're throwing is an integer. And then we have uh, an error. So there's this uh, always this balance between um, the data itself and then there's an error in sending the data or there's an error that happens while processing the data, while catching the data. What do you do? That's the idea. And then um, our subject, or I'm sorry, our subscriber is created by this subject. So this subject has a bunch of different things that you could do on it. So I'm just gonna write dot here so you can start seeing. There's like append things, do a failure. Uh, here's some debug things like breakpoint, buffer, catch, collect combine latest from multiple publishers, multiple data sources coming in, multiple throwers, gotta be one catcher, right? <laughs> That's a lot to catch. So you got la combine latest here. Uh, there's a contains and aware, like, hey, I'm not gonna catch this ball if I don't have a mitt that's big enough for it or if it's not meant to come to me and I just don't, I just wanna ignore it, I'll let the ball fly past me. Um, or just stop the ball, don't even get to me. So that's the idea of that subject. So I'm gonna use a basic one. I'm gonna use the, the basic like uh, functional programming models here to just give you an idea of what's happening. So the first thing is map. This is a good one. You got map, you got, uh, you got filter, and then reduce is like a bunch of other ones. Uh, so we're not gonna necessarily try and um, equate reduce to any one of these. But notice if I just type in dot map, um, got a couple different maps, got a map and error, try, try a map, flat map, compact map, try compact map, all sorts of really cool things to handle error, um, uh, instances of errors. And uh, that's, that's the one. And then you have um, filter. So there is a filter one, but then there's also like uh, drop where or while, drop while. It's kind of like a filter as well. Um, and then there's uh, a collect. Oh, that's not totally a filter, but um, you get the idea. There's there's going to be ones that are like that, and they're a little bit more specific. Um, yeah. So let's let's just uh, stick with map for now. So the part hi I highlighted here is map. We get that value, right? So what is this value? This value is our something. Um, it's going to be our integer. So. In this case, it's our integer. So I could say that this is an integer like so, and I'm declaring uh, specifically that it's gonna return a string. So whatever this closure is or whatever this callback is, I have to return a string. I'm just using the built-in description of an integer, which means it, it changes it into a string just provided by um, foundation itself or the standard library itself. Um, so that's what that does. So the now, uh, if I had like 10 numbers, they would all be 10 strings. Or if I had 10 classes of people, um, now I would have 10 strings because I'm creating it um, as a, a string. I'm, I'm transforming it, morphing it, mutating it. Um, so at this point on, the rest of the code going down, there are no more integers. We don't know that it came from an integer, at least not in the way that we've made it here. Uh, next thing I have is collect nine, collect nine. So what that means is that if there was 20 of these things, it's only gonna give me nine and run the rest of the code. And then the next nine, after the ninth thing has been collected, it's gonna run the rest of the code again. So it's kind of like a, a, like a stopper point. It's like saying like, don't go any further until we reach this maximum limit and then send the rest of the information through. 
So that's what that does, that's collect. So we'll, we'll look at that in a moment. I'm just overview right now. Uh, then we have a fun one because this is great for not necessarily just debugging, like you could use it for debugging, but it's, it's kind of like a, a side effect one. Um, it's sync. So right now we're just purely using it to receive a value. Uh, and so we're receiving that, that final value. That's all we're doing. And then we print it out. So I can just see it in the console. Um, now the rest of this stuff here is just making a bunch of numbers, whatever they might be, and then sending them through. So we're, we're ascending order of numbers. We just created a range here, zero through 10, send it through, and that's it. That'll be good. We can understand the collect part uh, in a moment when we go through it. And then we have a, a completion because um, as you can see, zero through 10, that's not exactly nine numbers. Um, so it's not divisible by nine. Um, so now we would have some numbers not sent and left over. So what we need to do, what I wanna do with you is run this so you guys can see what happens. So I'm gonna run it and uh, no breakpoints, just run it all and watch what happens. It's gonna be great. Aha, here it is. So it ran, here's my strings. So it collected it as an array of those 10 strings. So collect not only just waits for those things to finish, but it now turned it into an array. So if you check the output here, this is actually going to be an array of string. So let me give it that type so you can see that exactly. And then I'll just even point out here that it's not returning anything, so it's void. Um, so that is what's happening. So the output here is just gonna be an array. And I got that, so I got one, two, three, four, all the way up to eight there, so that is nine things. Um, so what would happen after sending, and you only get to nine, but you got two more things left? What happens? Well, that's when you use the subject again to send a completion. So just to give you an idea here, subject.send, we have here the input, which is just the next number in this case, the next integer. That is our ball, the next ball to throw. Um, and then you have a completion, right? So sends the completion signal saying like, I am done. And what's cool about collect is that it knows that when you are done, um, it's just going to send the rest of the information it had left over. So like all the leftovers. So we're not gonna send always nine all the time. Um, we have to send that we're complete. And uh, if you see here, there's completion, which is finished. Um, there's also like, what else, what else is there? Failure. And then you could say what the error is, make your own error, send it through. Couldn't complete because I don't know, database is offline. I don't know, you just, whatever errors you might run into. Uh, but that's, that's kind of the power there. So I know I'm doing it in an array, but imagine it's like the user tapping on things and that's what's making this all happen. So for example, you're filling out a form, um, you have nine inputs on the form and you need all of them to be valid before you could send it off. And the send off is like automatic. Like as soon as you do nine things and the user clicks like done, um, has the user done all these things? Send it off, collect nine. Can't collect nine, don't do anything to it. Error, I don't know. So then we send the completion, that's what sends all this here. So let me change this nine to a two. So you can see what that looks like. Let's go ahead, give it a run. There we go. So it did the zero and the one, two and the three, four and the five, so on and so forth. So we got to the last thing. See, it's 11 integers here we have. Uh, so it sent the last one, 10. So that's how that worked. I'm just showing you the fundamentals of some of these things and then you could take it from there uh, to, go, to go further. Uh, but that's a little bit of combined. So thanks for watching. If you guys have any questions, leave them below. If you guys wanna see more of this combined stuff, it's gonna be great for you to understand maybe real life situations you can use this. But now you have a better idea of like where we start and where we're going uh, from here. So have a good one.